Ask the Podcast Coach for May 13th, 2023. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means it's Saturday. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. Dot com and joining me right over there is the one and only Jim Collison from the average guy.tv and I keep putting the wrong I need to get no we're not starting over again the average guy.tv <laughs> Jim, how's it going? happy Saturday morning to you had a little it, streamyard's been making some updates lately and you know one of Dan engages proponents of streamyard their pillars as they said one was stability and I kind of wonder a little bit if I'm not saying they're moving away from that, but it just seeing some weird things happen inside of StreamYard. This morning, you clicked live, you saw live, but I didn't see live, yeah. and so I had to say, "Hey, because it's it's kind of weird doing the show knowing you're not actually broadcasting out to anybody." So, anyways, as soon as I said something, if it, like ten seconds later, it clicked in. So, so if you're a StreamYard user, I think just watch what you're doing a little more carefully, maybe than in the past. That and when you have, you know, Uncle Marv's uh, banner still here, you know, y- yeah. y- you might want to get rid of that. Since he <laughs> was just on my show this week. Uh, did, yeah. a, did a bang up job. Always good to have him on the show. From work. Yeah. And if you're looking to, uh, you know, to look good, there is one place you can go. That is, of course, after Jim gets his coffee. There. That's a no look for. <laughs> <laughs> and that is that is Mark from podcastbranding.co. And here's the thing, I thought about this last night. Mark's been podcasting, I think I want to say 8 years. It's a long time. And that counts for something besides the fact that A, he is a podcaster and B, he's an award-winning graphic artist. The man has seen a lot over the years in podcasting. You know, things have come and gone. And so he's got a great perspective on what works and what does not, whether that comes to your album artwork, whether it comes to your website or a lead magnet or whatever you want. Mark is going to sit down with you. First, he's going to go listen to your podcast. He's going to go look at your website. Then he's going to sit down with you and kind of go, okay, what are you looking to do? And the whole goal of it is to make sure that everything is in the same kind of vibe and points everybody in the same direction to maximize your effect with your brand. So if you want to look good, there is only one place to go. And of course, that's podcastbranding.co. Always tasty coffee. Big thanks to our good friend, Dan LeFebvre over there, based on a true story podcast.com. And we mentioned it last week. He's doing, I think a, he said in the chat, a four part series from the uh, Chernobyl series, and he's on part three this week. Uh, and if you, if you missed part two and part one, guess what? They're out there and ready for you. You could binge on these if you wanted to. Uh, so head out based on a true story podcast.com. And then don't forget, he's doing his weekly series as well. Dan, thanks for your sponsorship. The the question I thought I would bring up, and this, for the record, if you're a listener of the School of Podcasting, you're going to hear this again. Uh, it's I'm doing one of those things where I ask multiple people, and then I'm going to splice them all together, and I'm asking them the same question. And that is, we've all kind of, at least hopefully, come to the conclusion that our podcast is an experiment. And we try things, and then it grows, and then we want it to grow some more, and we're like, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I did this. And so my question is, how long should our test be? Like, so, and it's, and of course it's a podcast question. So, well, it depends, you know, so it might be less time if it's a daily show, because you've got more episodes that you're testing it on. Uh, you know, it depends maybe what you're trying to do, things like that. But uh, I don't know. I was, I thought about this. I did the thing with um, where I put uh, podcasting school dash from the School of Podcasting. I temporarily changed the name of that show because when you typed in podcast, my show came up first. And I was like, cool. And I left it that way for a month and did not see any noticeable bump. I didn't see a dip, but I didn't see a bump. And I was like, I think that's because most people don't find a podcast by searching for it, maybe. I mean, obviously some people do, but I didn't see anything 
that was major. I don't know, Jim, when, when uh, you know, what, if you're testing something, how long would you let it run before you go, yeah? <laughs> I, yeah, it's such a depends question. But it, yeah, I think, depends on how much you are enjoying it or not enjoying mm. it. Right. Uh, or at least that becomes, if we think of the decision matrix, like a, like a, uh, rubric. And so you're like, how long do I go? And you've got these various options thinking about, okay, if you're really enjoying it and it's not being, it's, it's not being successful. Well, I mean, maybe you keep going with it. If it's being really successful, but you're absolutely hating it. Well, you probably, I mean, you have to make that decision, but I think in most cases, something you really hate you don't want to do long term that's not necessarily good for your well-being so but you're gonna we all gonna land in the middle somewhere of oh, it's being marginally successful and i marginally like it or maybe i kind of like it or it's kind of fun so i think you've got to think through these factors of like am i am i really enjoying it do i see some potential for it we we in, we uh, uh put a brand new process in for uh our certified coaches at work and um it was a it was really challenging. I was going to say a disaster, but it was really really challenging, right? For about eight or nine weeks, wow. most stressed I've been in a long time. Like well, it's just one of those. Because because the one thing about it that's so great about this whole situation, human beings love change. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, and in this case, it wasn't our it wasn't the clients that were struggling with it. It was our internal folks, and it was just it was not it was not bad. I mean, it was not good. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, but I could see the future. I could see a better world when I'm like, guys, when this all comes together and we get all the bugs worked out, this is going to be awesome. And this, that's the thing I kept telling them throughout the, uh, throughout the whole, the whole time is like, just work with me on this. It's going to get better. So if you could see, if you're working on something, it's terrible now, but you can maybe see the future. Like, no, there's a future when I can absolutely see this is going to get better. We we ask this question all the time. Do you get excited about it? Do you believe in it? I mean, sometimes you're doing things you definitely believe in. Now, that may not be mainstream, right? And so it may never see the number, the, the success numbers, but if you believe in it. So I think there's some factors in there of, you know, how excited does it make you? Do you believe in it? Does it have high mission? Are you getting good feedback from those you are getting feedback from? I just got an email this morning from from one of my home gadget geeks listeners who said, "I know you've been struggling with it, but please keep going. <laughs> like don't stop." Yeah. Well, you got to, you know, do you yeah, that's that's a little encouragement. So, I don't know if it's cut and dry, Dave, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, Craig is saying maybe 3 months and then reevaluate it. I guess it, again Frequency it, matters though, right? What if you're only doing one a month? Yeah, that would be yeah. You know. It's it's tricky. The other thing you want to make sure of is because I did this once and I was like, oh, that was really dumb. Is there was a, uh, I mean, I can't remember the theme. There was a theme that had all sorts of fun stuff where you could have like A B switching for your actual blog post titles and all sorts of stuff. And because it was a brand new toy, I went in and was trying all sorts of stuff. And then things kind of clicked a little bit. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I went, oh, I, I wonder which one of those things was the result, like what made people like this more? Was it the fact that I changed the font color, that I changed the headline? So if you're going to be testing something to make your life much easier, change one thing. And then, you know, uh, Craig says maybe uh, a month if it's weekly. I'm like, that's not a bad idea. Four, you figure you got four cracks at getting people to to try something new maybe. But if you do more than one thing and then it works, you know, there's the old joke, 50% of my marketing is working. The bad news is I can't tell which, or half of my pod, half of my marketing is working. The bad news is I can't decide which half. So when you do multiple things and then it works, you're like, wait, which one? And then again, not the end of the world. You stop doing one and see if things go down and you're like, oh, it must be the other one then. So um, just something to keep in mind, but it was just something I just know where, like what I did um, I'm using a tool and man, the more I use it, it's an AppSumo thing. So if you're addicted to AppSumo, you, you don't want to look at this because you, you will buy it. I did. Um, Tanner Campbell, here's a name we haven't said in a while, told me about this and, and he just said, dude, it, 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 like, it'll do your laundry. It's called Switchy and, uh, it is a tool. So if you ever hear me talk about support this show.com, 
that is a URL that I applied to my Switchy account. And so if you go to um, supportthisshow.com slash switchy, you can basically track clicks. You can set Facebook pixels. You can make your own link tree. You can assign a QR code to a link. It's really, really cool. And I, I want to say it's 29 bucks, something like that. 39, I don't know, whatever it was. Whatever it is, it's worth it. It's a one-time fee. 39, yeah. 39. 39. So what I did on my first Buzzsprout ad, because I was playing with these, and the first ad was horrible. It just was horrible. And I had a ton of people that I had run it. And the thing was all about, you get to work with Dave Jackson. Look at my experience, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Who cares, right? (laughs) Second one is all about you and how you can benefit. And I'm going to, you know, help you pick the right gear and save money by not buying the wrong gear. And it's all about you. So it's a much better ad. But again, AppSumo is like, here's like 40 shows that could be a match for you. And I think I ended up running it on somewhere between 10 and 15. And so consequently that campaign lasted about a week because I think I got 5,000 downloads. Well, if you got 15 shows, that doesn't take long to gobble that up. So right now I'm running one. It's the same ad. Uh, but what I did was in switchy, I made, cause they give you a link to Spotify and here's a link for your show in Apple. And then a link to whatever it is you are trying to sell. And so I put a switchy link on all of those and where before I wasn't sure if it was working or not, I've already seen where I've got like three clicks to Spotify, one click to Apple and like one click to uh, the school of podcasting, which takes them over to my courses. So, and what I'm doing is right now I've only got two shows that are running the ad and I keep checking it every day because I don't want it to go above maybe four or five because that way the ad will be seen more to that same audience. And I think I'll end up in theory with a better kind of, uh, you know, return on that. Hopefully we'll, we'll see. But I always ask people when they join the school of podcasting, that's one of my first questions. How did you find me? And usually it's, I found your podcast. In fact, I would say 80 to 90%. Oh, I, I, you know, somebody told me about your podcast and I came over and you seem to, you know, know what you're doing. So, so they'll come along that way. So it'll be fun to watch. Um, we got John on deck. Um, oh, there he is. You know why? Cause he likes the shirt. I love the shirt. <laughs> it's his shirt. Here you go. Look at this thing, man. It's spooky. Wow. It's scary. It's metal. That's a serious, that's a serious skull there. I will say one thing, wash the shirt before you wear it because I did not. And right now it's going to sand my nipples off. So <laughs> it's a little, little rough. I needed a little little tied, little downy, little snuggle, maybe action to it. Uh, but uh, it's definitely a cool design. Uh, I was in Tennessee a couple months ago, got to see John face to face. He was on the podcast review show a while back. And um, yeah, so what's going on, my man? Uh, first of all, welcome to Saturday morning. Things weren't synchronized. <laughs> I had my coffee and uh, good to see you. And uh, th- yeah, that was great in uh, Nashville. It's great to meet you face to face. And listeners, I do recommend that review the podcast segment that these guys do. It was a world of education and I, it was a great time. Thanks, man. Have, you're welcome. Hello, Jim. I enjoy your part of the show as well. You, you do a great Thanks. job. Appreciate it. I had a YouTube comment on our YouTube channel. One of the listeners mentioned that my microphone during a certain interview was fading in and out. And I noticed this on previous uh, projects. Now, I use a Rodecaster board, the original, going through an EV27 mic. uh, Nice setup. And I'm really concerned of why this would happen. Dave, I may have even mentioned this to you before, and I've consulted other audio people i did i did edit down a quick 30 second video to illustrate it. i don't know if this is the platform to p- play it um but i'm dumbfounded i don't know why it would happen have are you noticing it now while i'm speaking no are you moving at all in the video nothing more than maybe like this i, I just i just noticed it yeah there was a spot where we lost audio for a second, and then there was a spot where your video froze. Where's the point of recording? Is it re- are you recording to the web, or is are you recording locally? Um, I'm recording Zoom to lo- locally. 
Yeah. Meaning my computer? Yeah, like it just locked up, it just locked up there for us. So sure. no, what I what I mean is when when you hear these recordings or when people are hearing these recordings, was the was the spot of it being recorded local or is it being recorded somewhere on the web? Uh, I I'm not sure if I understand the question entirely. It's recorded locally, meaning I recorded on my computer the right. Zoom. And upload it. But the thing is, in the show, the other hosts are fine. Yeah. I, I The only thing I could think of is if you have a noise gate. That was my initial reaction was like, if you have a noise gate mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you get comfortable and lean back, if you've got the noise gate set aggressively, it might start to cut you out a little bit. But I all mean, right, I'm, all right, that's I'm sitting here watching you and I'm like, now nah, he's spot on right on the mic. I'm like, mm, so, but I could see, especially, I mean, I forget how long your show is. It's usually around an hour, right? A I'm, little less, depending yeah. between half hour and 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, and I can just see sometimes we get comfortable, um, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you, you, you back away from the mic. Uh, that whole John, what is. kind of computer do you have? Like, is it a Mac uh, or PC? It's a uh, PC AS US. Okay. Um, Do you, how old is it? Oh, um, a year and a half. Okay. okay, so it's 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 fairly, yeah. Because it looks like have you ever have you ever recorded and look at your CPU or GPU utilization? Windows has a task manager where you can bring that up and look and see where your CPU and GPU are when you're recording. It could be. Like I see, it could be your PC is getting, there's moments where it's getting overwhelmed and it's going full CPU and then it can't record when it's at hundred percent or, or more CPU. And it, so it could be local to you. So you just might want to look, that'd be one thing to check. Okay. How's my okay. CPU utilization doing this time? Just to make sure I'm not, uh, I'm not overwhelming it. And then like Dan says, the, technically make sure you're able to uh, push to the stream everything you have. So if you're broadcasting, like say you're on Wi-Fi in your, in your place and not hardwired in Wi-Fi is not good at streaming video. Just not it, some of the, some of like the six E versions that are coming out now are much better at it. But the typical Wi-Fi that most people have not very good for streaming video. So the Wi-Fi could be causing it that you'd see that in between you and maybe a, a, a recording to the web if you were doing it that way. So you just may want to look at utilization and am I making sure I'm, is my up and down speeds good? Am I making sure I'm getting my signal to whatever's recording accurately and, and, and quickly? Okay. Uh, yeah, we, I am directly plugged into the router yeah, That's you know, good. up here in Rochester. We have a uh, green light. Okay. Which is uh, that's, your internet ser- that's your internet service provider. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's um, I have a tech guy that yeah. handles all this and, I will consult with him. I'll show him this video. Yeah. And yeah. It, uh, and all right. It, yeah. And if you are using, check the software too, when you're checking the utilization, some software like zoom is a gigantic, it can be a gigantic a resource hog where Streamyard may not be, or you may, if you have a thousand browser tabs open, not that I'm guilty of that, but if you have a thousand <laughs> browser tabs open, okay. You might want to shut down a few, right? Cause they're all taking memory. Right, the, all those tabs are taking uh-huh. memory, and that might mean you may not have enough RAM in there to support all the things that you're doing. So, do do a quick hardware check and just make sure everything's fine there. It usually circles back to Jade. That all right, hey fellas, thank you. I appreciate the show and the effort. And and, and your website is. Oh, MetalMayhemROC.com. There we go. Real user-friendly, uh, weekly podcast, live radio show on Monday nights on Metal Devastation Radio. Um, s- stars of today, big stars of yesterday. And I-, I invite you to visit and join our community. There you go. Thank Thanks, you, John. John. Okay. Thanks for jumping Thanks, in. Guys. Yeah, you bet. Good yep. to meet you. Bye. See ya. Yeah, the, uh, the new Winger album. Who knew? You know, <laughs> it's good stuff. I'm here to tell I, you. I'm going to bet John's problem is resource related in hardware. That just, it looks like 
it looks like his PC is struggling at some point to keep up. You know, it's, he's got the inter, intermittent, even on StreamYard here, yeah. there were those moments where he'd kind of drop out. And we just, we have to really, I mean, moving to the Mac for me was just really nice in this area because that, and you too, right? It The, the Mac is, and I'm not a Mac guy, like I'm a PC guy, but the Mac is just the 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 mini the Mac Mini is the perfect podcasting piece of equipment. It's priced right. The in, integrated M1 and now M2 chip it, uh, with the memory and the and the hard drive all being integrated on a single bus. Man, it's just perfect for. It removes all the questions of is my PC or is my you know is it good enough? It removes all those questions. So I don't have an affiliate link. I don't sell um, Apple computers. Yeah. But it, I have really uh, move into the M1 was one of the best decisions ever I ever made. Yeah, it's it's not really fair because I'm comparing a computer that's probably six or years old to my new Mac Mini. But I love the fact that on Hindenburg on the PC again, not a Hindenburg thing. It's a PC thing. But if I go above two X and I'm trying to just listen quickly and you know edit the low hanging fruit, it will eventually. It was weird. It's like a record that gets stuck, that gets stuck, that gets stuck, that gets stuck, and you can see the uh, you can see the progress still going. You're like, wait, what's going on? So you have to stop and this and that. And on the Mac, I can go like two and a quarter to the point where I can't really understand what people are saying anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, hold on. Um, yeah. And so well, it was designed, it was designed to do this. Like, this is the thing when they, when they, when they, you know, when Apple looked at, at, at building this new chipset, their thoughts were content creators. Like that's what they were thinking about. And so it just works. Uh, it works really, really well. Just one point of caution. If you'd start looking that way, the, uh, the, the current Mac, you know, the M1, uh, chipset M2 chipset now, not really upgradable. So make sure you get as much as you possibly can afford when you're going to do it. Yeah, because you're not going to go in there as PC guys are like, oh, no, I'm going to add more RAM. Now nah, you're not going to add more RAM to this. You're not even going to add more internal hard drive uh, space to it or swap out the chip. You're just not going to do that. It's all integrated in there. So get as much as you can as you do. But uh, I can't. I, I, there's There are a few, just a few things I highly recommend in that for podcasters has been just a world of, of uh, it's made my podcasting life a lot better. Yeah. DR is asking me what on the switchy thing, what level did I buy? I just went into my account and it looks like I bought two tiers at $35 each or 39 or something like that. But it's, it's definitely worth it. I, it's, you can set up folders. So like I set up a folder called Buzzsprout uh, ads. And so I can categorize those links. So I can go right in there and see what's getting clicked on. It's actually a I still, the only thing I ever get worried about is the whole one-time fee on these products. That's really not a great business model for software. So I'm always kind of like, hmm, like I, um, you know, there are a few that I, I don't think I've lost any, but I remember for a while, there's a branding one now, like brand something, something, but mine was Brandy. Uh, cause every time I say that, I hear whatever the name of that song is from yeah, the seventies, yeah. you're fine yeah. girl. Ow. And, uh, <laughs> and for a while, Brandy went offline and like, nobody could find Mr. Brandy. Like, Hey, what happened to like the whole thing? And finally we reached out to AppSumo and we're like, Hey, like we bought a lifetime deal to this thing. What happened? And then it came back online. But, uh, that's my, my always biggest worry is that, uh, yeah, exactly. Uncle says, uh. She's a fine girl all on the thing. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's a fun tool. If you want to track, it's just, if you're doing anything and you want to go, is this working or not? It's really handy. I just went the extra mile and added a, a URL to it. And then I did find out, cause I think right now, if you go to support this show.com, it kind of goes womp womp, you know, sad trombone. Um, and I think there's something even in switchy where I can set it up to go. Oh, when somebody goes to the actual domain, ship them over here so welcome to the app sumo show it's uh where we <laughs> it is well, it's app sumo works great i think in this community that we, we that we podcast to it's a great way to kind of get inexpensively started that sense yeah. didn't make sense but you know what i mean and in a way to get into something you the the debate versus buying at lifetime the lifetime both for you and for the software company that's making it right that's what that means 
do, you know, I, I, I'm with you, although there are folks who are adamantly against the annual or the monthly right. subscription co- uh, costs to some of these things. So yeah, it's a good, it's a good place to go. It certainly is. I think one of the better places to go to get software Yeah, because you don't know, like sometimes you go to get it and you're like, is this, is this actually real? Like, is this going to download a virus to my computer? Well, by the way, that still happens. So, you know, the other thing that's cool is if you buy something and it's, it's not good. Um, that 30 day money back guarantee is dead on. It's I had, uh, before yeah. I bought brand air, there was another one <laughs> or actually when Brandy went out of, well, went out of business temporarily. Um, some other guy came in It was like, Hey, for you guys that can't find Brandy, here's my thing. And it was definitely made more for an agency. It was not what I use it for. If you go to school of podcasting.com slash press kit, um, you'll see there's all my logos, my bios, my social, all the stuff that people ask for. And so if somebody goes, Hey, can you send me a headshot? I just go school of podcasting.com slash press kit, which points at my brand uh, website and uh, it works. So, but um, I, anyway, so I bought this, brandy wannabe and i was like this is not what i wanted and i went back and said hey how do i do the money back guarantee and they're like oh click this thing fill out a form and my money was back in my um you know account quickly so um there we go um uh dr says i kind of don't pay attention to lifetime word if i get my 39 dollars worth i'm good that's a good way to look at it too um speaking of money and then we're going to get to cindy's question uh not speaking of money speaking of uh software um I was somehow under the, I know they have a beta out um, of Hindenburg 2, but I actually went to like do the thing, you know, uh, and um, and buy it. And uh, it turns out it's not available yet. I was like all weekend last weekend, I was like, all right, it's Hindenburg weekend. And then I finally emailed, I'm like, guys, like I see in your uh, your support system, it's like when you log in, you will see an upgrade option, which is cool that they've got the documentation ready. But I believe the software is ready. It's the the licensing and all that other stuff of of the upgrading thing is what they're working on right now. But they said it'll be available very soon. So if you're looking for Hindenburg two, it's not quite there yet. So um, anyway, so that's that. Uh, and Cindy has a great question from LinkedIn. So glad I'm streaming to LinkedIn. Where would you recommend to host besides Riverside, and what is the downside of Riverside? And she's new to podcasting, so welcome to the uh, podcasting pool. It's a lot of fun. It's, um, well, here's the thing. Riverside is one of those things that the people that use it either love it. Uh, so we think of some people that loved it. Um, anyway, and then people that hate it. Like, I'm not a big fan. I have not. I've tried it a couple times, and that's usually from the guest side. I know Dr. Brad Miller, who has asked a couple questions here on the show, he had it for a year. He goes, I hated it, but I know other people that are the direct opposite. So the, I think maybe the downside, but I keep hearing, I've had a lot of people say, you need to go back and look at Riverside. I'm like, okay, maybe I need to do that. I'm a big fan of Squadcast because it's, I told those guys, I said, hey, when they started, I'm like, keep it simple because it's the guest. The guest is the problem. It's not the podcaster. It's the guest. And make it easy to log in and then... They, they've all kind of upped their game. I loved it when it was like, hey, you get separate tracks and it's easy to get a mixed tracks of the audio. My brain hurts when I think about Riverside and getting separate tracks. So like, here's your gym audio, here's your gym video, here's your Dave audio. Here, That makes me, you know, that's where I'm like, and that's where I go hire an editor and go, here you go. Um, I don't know, Jim, what do you usually use? Well, we use StreamYard to record everything. And I'm I'm kind of a... I'm a super easiest kind of guy. Mm. I like whatever's super easiest. So the, the, I don't get separate tracks. I don't, I, I get them all in one. I'll use Auphonic if I need to fix the audio. We don't do a lot of video edits. Um, it's a little different at work because they download it at work. They download it and then put it into Premiere and do some magic stuff to it there. For me personally, just for home gadget geeks and, and such. Um, I don't. The Riverside, the advantage to Riverside, though, I, th- I feel like it was a podcast recording piece of software that was developed by an engineer. Then they tried to put on, because at the time, uh, StreamYard was coming out and some other uh, Squadcast and some of those others. So there was this arms race of who could get the most features. And I feel like Riverside tried to do broadcasting or tried to say, yeah, we can broadcast too. 
But the complication of doing all that recording and broadcasting meant they meant uh, or streaming meant that streaming kind of came last. And when you, the last time you and I were on Riverside, now we haven't tested this in a while. It, it wasn't the best streaming experience where StreamYard comes at it from streaming first. Then they've added in all of the now they have multi-track. Now you can do some, you know, you there's other things you can do with it. So I think it just depends on your priority. I think if your priority is recording and you're not going to do a lot of live streaming, I think Riverside's fine for that. It's got some really cool features and some things you can do. If you're going to broadcast with it as well, well, okay. I yeah. don't know. I haven't seen again, I haven't seen it in a while, but it didn't work the last time we Yeah. Did it. Kyle says squadcast. Um Somebody had a question about, oh yeah, Craig, um, are you happy with StreamYard's audio for a podcast? Do they compress it? I, I leave it. I, I there's certainly something going on. I don't yeah. know. To be honest, I don't know. There's something going on the, the behind the scenes for some ducking that, that happens and you can turn that off and go stereo mode. There's, there's two options. You can let them manage it or not manage it. Certainly if you're broadcasting to YouTube, YouTube is compressing it when it hits over there. So if you broadcast in StreamYard and you go to YouTube and you download the YouTube instance, the audio is a little different than when you get it directly from StreamYard. Video too, in some cases. So you, you there's some trickery going on at YouTube. I, 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 your mileage might vary, I guess is yeah. what I'm saying. When in yeah. doubt, record it on your, you know, zoom p4 or a roadcaster or whatever so I, I i don't care what platform i'm using i'm always recording a second set because yeah. we yeah. had that thing uh, a couple weeks ago where my sd card was full that i was like oh and then i end up using the riverside riverside the uh stream yard audio and i didn't get a single complaint it's definitely mm -hmm. listenable it wasn't mm -hmm. quite as clear but it was okay um Chris Stone says Riverside is capable of HD recordings and options for post editing. However, I experienced a ton of audio drift on longer interviews, and that's kind of what I hear. And once StreamYard went ISO video, he jumped. So, yeah. um, and then uh, he has another. Where'd he go? Um, StreamYard can take off echo cancellation, download a wave, and uncompress. They just added uh, audio cleanup as well. So there's a little bit of. I, I, again, I just need to go back and play. Uh, but I've, the thing is I need to play by having a fake interview. Like I don't want to use it on a real interview Yeah, yeah. because yeah. you're like, ah, and I, somebody had said uh, they had used Squadcast and then had to jump into zoom. Zoom is always the backup for me. Cause a, everybody knows how to use it, but there, there, I don't know if I've ever had to jump into zoom from Squadcast, but I have on, on uh, the guy from Riverside when it first came out, Gave me a nice demo, and then I used it, and there ended up, and again, this is not fair because this was, like, at this point years ago. A while ago, yeah. Yeah, but there was a, like, weird, like, delay. Like, I'd ask a question, and I'd just see my guest just sitting there doing nothing, and then all of a sudden he'd start answering, and then he would sit there and kind of like, why isn't Dave asking me a question? Because mm -hmm. there was a weird, so that wasn't fair. But, I mean, all these, many of these platforms had issues when they first started off. Um, Dan says, I love Squadcast for audio. When I switched to video, I noticed some sync drift. So he switched to Zencaster. Yeah, I've never used Squadcast video things. So, and I think it's, it's, I don't know that one is better than the other. I'm like, hey, pick one. If it works, keep using it. If it doesn't, try one of the other three and, you know. Yeah, if it works for your workflow, I think that's the key is everybody has a little bit of a different way of they want to, the the end result might be the same for us, but how we get there may be different. And so you've just got to kind of, I think you got to kind of work through all of them to say which one works the best for me based on my equipment and my location and the way I interview guests and what I expect to get back from my host provider. On these, that's a big that's a big deal. Some people don't need all those things back. I don't certainly I don't care. Yeah, uh, Kyle Bondo says the problem isn't the tool; it's the education of the guest who thinks Zoom video is the standard. This is the blue Yeti argument all over again. Blue and Zoom have great marketing. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah, and it really is. I had, forget who I was talking to, and they were talking about their guests, and they didn't do this and that. And I just I didn't want to be mean, but I'm like, well, did you give them any kind of like expectation sheet like we expect you to have headphones on or earbuds or something and yeah, yeah. please be in a room that's not you know doesn't have 50 kids and five dogs and 
you know, a 15 foot ceiling and the whole thing is made out of glass. That would not be good. Um, yeah. And we, we actually, it's funny. We live in a world now. These, these earbuds used to be so common. You could say to people, uh, yeah. Hey, you got, you have a set of earbuds and they, they panic. They're like, Oh no, no, no. I left my pods, my ear pods or whatever. Yeah. I think that's what they call them. And I'm like, no, 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 just, just your wired. No, they don't give those. They used to give those away as part of every phone. Right. Yeah. And so I had 50 of them uh, hanging around here, but now they don't. And, and getting someone to put on a headset. I'm like, okay, so do you have a, do you have a, you know, do you have a headset with a mic and they, they just see panic in their eyes. Like that's going to mess up my hair. I mean, I just spent an hour <laughs> doing my hair, you know? And, and, and so it, it, I think we're, I feel like we're backsliding a little bit with the quality during the pandemic podcast. It got easier. People got microphones. They were using earbuds. It was, it seemed like it was better. Is as we're moving each month, I'm noticing we're backsliding a little bit more with get with our guests. And I'll say, do you, do you have a pair of earbuds? I mean, don't you ever listen to something privately? And they're just that's just not uh, nobody's doing this anymore, Dave. Nobody nobody has wired headphones. earbuds or yeah or headphones anymore. We're just I don't know. I, it's just it's crazy. They just look at me and no no I don't have any. I'm like really yeah I've got I've got 16 pairs uh, you know but but it's just a different. I think we're living in a different world. I wonder how that how that will play out. I thought the pandemic was going to bring headsets and mics to everybody, but it didn't. Mm-hmm. It just did. And then those that did get them are have put them back in the drawers, and they're they're jumping on. You know, they're they're jumping on these calls with these puck mics or using their whatever mics. Yeah. And the I'll say, are we using the microphone on your laptop? And they're like, yeah, does it sound okay? And I'm like, no, it sounds terrible. Has anybody ever told you it sound? No, no one's told me. Yeah, they yeah. don't. They, they won't. Right. They just, cause for work, you just put up with whatever that the person gives you. So yeah, I do feel like we're backsliding a little bit and that's, I think that's too bad. Yeah. Kyle had a great point about having the backup recording. He says two is yeah. one and one is, is none. Yeah. yeah correct. Because correct. it never fails, man. The more, the better the interview, the more important the person, however you want to frame it, the more likely that that thing's going to get eaten. And that's just the, the way it is. So that's why I always say, I mean, I remember once I was on Zoom and I got done, you know how it's like, hey, I'm converting the file to blah, blah, blah. And it did that for a while. And I went to play the video and it was like, nope. And I've had that before, and usually you have to like run it and unzip it again, blah, blah, blah. Ended up sending it to Zoom, and they're like, yeah, this is DOA. This is just, and I was uh, like, wow, I lost a, a recording on Zoom. And that's when I was like, well, when I say always have a second recording going, I can add Zoom to the mix. So uh, Dan says, I had to jump to Zoom for a backup when Squadcast wasn't allowed through the university firewall uh, trying to interview a professor. So yeah, backups are, are good to have. You just, you never know. It's kind of weird. Um, Chris says, uh, guest checklist now, <laughs> get your ceiling fan and nose hairs out of the shot. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's a good, uh, look where the camera is. Yeah. I'm horrible at that. I've been looking at, I just look like I'm looking at Jim through the whole episode. Um, uh, handsome Jim. That's uh, handsome. Jim. Is, that's right. <laughs> put on headphones, put a light in front of you. Uh, <laughs> if you're not in witness protection, I like this. Um, I wonder if that's actually my brother. Um, because I know a guy named Doug Jackson. I used wire earbuds as squall as sound quality is better and no need to ever be concerned about. Is it charged? Yeah, that's true. Because if they're wired, yeah. you have to worry. Because no, I know right on, right it's, on. it's kind of annoying, but my wireless earbuds all the time, if I have them on or the, I open the case, my Mac always goes, hey, I see you got wireless earbuds. You want to like connect. And I always wonder if I could then connect like my wireless earbuds to Squadcast because it would show up as a microphone. I'm like, we'll have to try that sometime. But yeah. I just, I, you know, again, that is a, a, you know, it may not sound that bad. Who knows? At least you don't have to worry about the stupid cable rubbing up against, uh, you know, your shirt and that whole oh, thing. Oh, you know, that's it. <laughs> Yeah. And ladies, ladies yeah. with jewelry realize every time the every microphone time. is is right near your neck and. Yeah, you've got uh, you know a Christmas tree's worth of ornaments on your neck. <laughs> Maybe not the time. Uh, Always, uh, yeah. every time, every time. Yeah. DRS says I grind my teeth down to my gums when I have a client that won't push headphones or buds for their interviews. 
It's so inconsiderate of your listeners. It should be a non-negotiable. It should be. And here's, I think, part. It is him. It's my brother. My brother's listening to my show. Hi, Dougie. See, it's funny because he's the only person who can call me Davey. I'm the only person who can mm. call him Dougie. You know, do what you can. I, For me, I think part of the problem is we refer to the, the interviewee as the guest. And if a guest comes in, you're supposed to be polite because, well, they're your guest and you might want them to come back. But if a guest came into your house and pooped on the sofa, I don't think you'd be going, oh, please, uh, can you get the, you know, recliner while you're at it? You go, hey, that's that's not acceptable. Like, don't, like, I'll be kind and, you know, consider it, but you're not allowed to poop on the sofa. That's not good. Well, the, the pre-call is the key on this, and we still are doing those on yeah. a pretty regular basis. And I just did one. I have a we're, one we're doing in Brazil on next Wednesday. And so Friday, we did a, we did a pre-call with them. And she came in, and her lighting was great. It was She was, like, nearly perfect out the gate, which was awesome. Like, yeah. she had a headphones on and i think they're doing i think that team is doing a better job of prepping them before they get to me which is kind of nice because they know i'm going to get on the call and ask these questions and i don't want the guest to be embarrassed in front of me so i think they're pre-calling the pre-call and then we're doing a pre-call so by the time they get to me camera was lined up straight lighting was great earbuds were in sound was good and then we'll have them back on on wednesday and it's just i know we talk about this all the time but it's just one of those kinds of things where preparation is best. It just saves, then you're not having the awkward conversation right before the show yeah. or right before the interview. And they're, they're just better if they're prepared. Get, take 15 minutes and call and make sure they got the stuff. Yep. I'll send them, send them a StreamYard link or a Riverside or whatever you're using. Yeah. Connect on it. Make sure they're fine. More planning is less editing. No Correct. planning, less, a lot more mm-hmm. editing. Um, Brad said, I did an interview last month while he was in Disney worlds. Um, you were in Disney world podcast was stupid and did it anyway. Uh, the only time that kind of, you can get away with that. If you're at a place, like if I'm at podcast movement, uh, and somebody asked a question about podcast movement, we'll get that in a second. But if I'm in a noisy place, I just talk about the elephant in the room. I'm in the hallway here, podcast movement. I'm talking with Jim Collison, and he just got back from the, you know, Squadcast booth. Jim, tell us what you saw there. And that way you don't have to try to, because if you noise gate it out, then it's weird because it's super quiet when nobody talks, but it's explosively loud when somebody does, uh, that whole nine yards. So uh, that's the case. And the other thing is I've, I've had two instances where I'm like, that was dumb. And one was I had somebody had a headset and she just kept having plosives. So all the B's and P's were popping and I had her move it like four times and then it would seem fine. And then the minute she said, because it was like, Poof, and I was like, ah, and I was just like, ah, you know what? I feel uncomfortable asking her to move her mic again. And then I went in and every time there was a plosive, I would highlight it in my software and remove anything beneath 80 K. So I would take out all the base. It took me three hours to edit a two, a 20 minute podcast because, and I was like, I'm never next time I'm going to tell this person you, you got to move your mic because I'm not going through this again. And the other one was I had a woman in a, she was in an RV in Arizona. It was like, I don't know, 2 million degrees outside. So she had her air conditioning on. And I said, is there any chance you can turn that off? And she said, no, because it's 8 million degrees outside. And I was like, okay, hold on. We're just going to be quiet for like a minute. I said, it's going to be weird, but I just want to record the sound of your, your air conditioning. And it, it did an okay job, but she definitely had that underwater, like, Dave, I'm so great to be in the podcast today. So, and it's like, okay, that's, that's, and my audience actually leaned out and said, I don't know what happened to that audio, but that was bad. And I was like, eh, that's, and that's, that's on me. It's not on the guest. That's on me. Right. Right. So keep that in mind. Um, it'll save your, your sanity as well. Um, all right. So we had a question about podcast movement. Uh, here we go. About to register for podcast movement. Uh, will anything, be different due to the daily wire uh, post fiasco from last year. As far as I know, I know they changed something in their terms of service that politely just says, Hey, can everybody just chill out? <laughs> it was because it, it's a very touchy subject. I mean, it's, it's triggering just to, just to smell the subject. It's like, mm, do we really want to go there? Um, but as far as I know, and, and really, mm, like that wasn't podcast move. Well, see, some might say it was podcast movement's fault, but they're like, you know, um, 
but as far as I know, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if I'm going yet. Um, I'm go. Oh, we we should talk about that. I'm going to England. Um, oh, nice. In uh, let's see. I will leave the twenty second. So we'll still have a show next week on the twentieth, and I get back on the twenty sixth. Yeah, we should be able to not skip. It'll be fun. I'll be really tired and jet lagged, but we should be able to. If something changes for the twenty seventh, yeah, I'll figure it out. We'll uh, figure I out. will do that. So uh, and then uh, Craig had a question. I think some hosts are a comment. I think some hosts are too reluctant to interrupt the interview. Oh man, am I glad you said that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do another show with Eric K. Johnson, who's like a. 30 year radio veteran called podcast review show. John talked about it earlier and we just put out an episode. Uh, we only do that show when somebody pays us cause it's, it's a lot of work. And so we, uh, John was the previous episode and the newest one is Brad from Dr. com. And Brad had a, a, a guest who is one of those guys that you can just pull a string and they're off to the races. And so, half of our comments for Brad were like how to handle, like how to get that horse back in the barn. Cause that guy just took off and we're like, and what, what Brad ended up doing, which I can get is he, uh, he ended up making it a three part episode and really the, like the good part of, of this person's story was in episode two. And I'm like, and we just talked to different ways you could have summarized the story instead of, because this guy has a decent story. He just gives you every detail that you need. Back in 96, and it was 47 degrees outside and 37% humidity, I was in like, wait, we don't need that. We don't need that much detail. And so uh, podcastreviewshow.com is, is one where, and there are things you can do if you have somebody that won't shut up. One is like, hey, Jim, Jim, hold on a second. I want to ask you, we'll, we'll get back to that. I was, before you move on, I want to ask you about this one thing. So you just, you politely interrupt them and explain that, oh, you caught my attention. There's that. Somebody did, uh, I was on with Deidre from Cap Show, and she had asked me something about like, who is this for or something like that. And we both were having a good conversation, but we had drifted like way off the question. And she said, oh, that's a really good point, especially when we're talking about who this is for. And I was like, oh, I see what you did there. And I immediately said, oh, yeah, we, we're, like, we're way off the topic. Uh, so that's that's another way you can just say, uh, wow, Jim, that's amazing. Getting back to podcasting, what about such? So it's just a polite way of like, hey, you know what? We're over here talking about toy trains. Getting back to podcasting, what is your, you know, it's a way to do that. Jim, yeah, you, you, well, you might even think about uh, allowing some space for those edits in that. So there's maybe this long conversation, and you want to say, "Well, getting back to podcasting," but give give put some air in there. So when you go to edit, uh, and then watch the tone of your voice, so that it doesn't sound like you've cut it, because you you might go in and cut that out, mm-hmm. in, including the part of getting back to podcasting. The listeners don't need to know that you brought the guest back around. Make an edit bring them back in, but phrase the question in a way, both with your voice and cadence, uh, tone and cadence. Yeah. So it makes it sound like you've asked, you've just asked naturally asked that question. And I might say, I might look at you, Dave and say, all right, let's bring this back to podcasting. Dave, what do you think is the right? You can hear, like I could have made an edit in there and made that sound like that was just the na- the next natural mm-hmm. question. When I removed my, my part of let's get back to podcasting. So you can do that as well. You've just got to be really, um, really uh, intentional about your tone because the, no, there's nothing harder in editing audio than changing the tone of your voice. Oh yeah. Right. Knowing like, Oh no, no, that tone does not match where we are in the interview at all or match the point in the question. And so, yeah, you can do like, this is where Descript is a little bit of a problem. Yeah, you can edit the audio or you can edit the transcript. But if you didn't get the tone right, it could sound very, very awkward. I had a show a couple weeks ago that I thought was episode 877 and it was 878. And I said 877 three times. And that was the hardest part. It's like, just just go to uh, schoolofpodcasting.com slash 877. It's like, no, that doesn't. (laughs) It's like, yeah, no tone matters. Yeah. 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 That doesn't uh, work at yeah. all. Um, we'll hit this question. Then we're going to thank our awesome supporters. And later 
Jim will be getting his nerd on. Um, Brad talking again about podcast movement has increasingly become more focused on the big shots and less valuable for any, that is, and they should brand it this way. Podcast movement evolutions is a lot of business to business advertisers talking to networks, that kind of thing. Podcast movement, like the one coming up in Denver, at least the last time I went to them, it was much more, I mean, they, they're still, you're going to walk in, there's going to be wondery banners everywhere. But that's the one that more indies go to, uh, and there are, you know, it's a it's a it's a big conference. Any conference you go to, bring good shoes, bring some chapstick and some gum or breath mints, and then you have to get out of your comfort zone and talk to new people, uh, if that's not something you're comfortable with, because, you know, the if you're having a good conversation in the hallway, and then you look up and you go, oh wait, there's there's a thing coming up. I would stay in the hallway because I usually the stuff I take away from those conferences and not that the presentations are bad, but I usually get more out of the hallway than I do out of the, uh, the presentations, but they're fun. It's just, I know a lot of podcasters are introverts and, you know, meeting new people, but that's just, I was at one, uh, we went to the after party at Podfest, and I was standing next to another Lipson employee. And I said, "This is so weird." I used to knew I used to know about eighty percent of the room. And I said, "I don't know any of these people." I said, "I know maybe fifteen people out of you know one hundred and fifty in this party." And I said, "I guess I got to go meet some new people." And I just started walking up to like, "What brings you to the conference?" And that whole nine yards. And they're you know they're like, "Why is Grandpa bugging us? Who is this guy?" <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not Grandpa. That's it. Well, we do want to, uh, somebody who, who doesn't consider, you know, who likes to support grandpa dog on it. But before you start, can oh, you yes. get a little bit? We can do. Get a little... There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. Our awesome supporters. If you'd like to support the show, go over to ask the podcast coach.com slash awesome. And, uh, cause Kyle Bondo, Kyle Bondo is on that page, by the way. Um, nice. If you want to start a podcast, I would love to help you. Uh, at the School of Podcasting, you've got courses, you've got coaching, you've got community, and yes, it's not a typo, unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching. Why do I do that? Because that's what I love to do. So rather than knock on doors, and I still do one-on-one -on -one consulting, but um, I do a lot more for the members of the School of Podcasting. Uh, our Spotlight Supporter of the Week is Greg over at the Indie Drop-In Network. Go to IndieDropIn.com. If you have a spooky show, if you have true crime or a comedy show, that's a whole website that he really, he's an SEO guru. So he gets a ton of traffic over there and then puts your show there. So it's a great way if you're in those genres to, um, to get more people coming to your show. Uh, and of course, Ask the Podcast Coach runs on Tripod page. Uh, well, actually, it runs on PodPage. If you want a tripod page, go to tripodpage.com. And Jim, your words are magic. Remember last week we were talking about how we do Ask the Podcast Coach, and I said, oh, I, I update these links in PodPage, and I was scrolling and scrolling, and you go, is there a search somewhere? And I go, actually, there isn't. I need to talk to Brandon. Never talk to Brandon. Poof. There we go. There's a search wow. now. So Nice. Nice. That's the one thing I really like about Brendan. If it's a good idea and it's going to really, because he said, look, I do one thing. I make websites for podcasters and he adds tools that they need. But like, I know somebody asked, like, can I build an email list? And you can collect emails, but he's not the place where you send the email. He's like, nope, I do one thing. I do websites. Like have fun with, you know, MailChimp and all that other stuff. He goes, I can collect email addresses for you and you can embed your mail chimp or whatever form into pod page, but uh, he's a really good guy. So check it out again, tripodpage.com. If you need more Jim Collison, uh, go over to the average guy.tv, check out home gadget geeks. And we're on the journey to 100. This is a new thing. Cause right now we're at like, I think 39, uh, 32 actually, uh, patrons. So we're on the road to 100. I heard this on uh, Jen Briney's on a show called we're not wrong. And they, when they talk about their patron, they're like, all right, we're on the road to whatever it was. So we're on the journey to 100. If you'd like to be on that journey with us, there are bonus things. You get invited to uh, bonus kind of meetups and things like that. Occasionally, I'll throw some bonus content in there. Uh, askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. And it's also just a fun way to say, hey, thanks for doing the show. We so, should do something for 100, you and I. We should talk. We should think about like when we get there, yeah. what, it's, what, what will we do? We'll do? We should do something. The hokey pokey and turn yourself around. 
I mean, I do that most days. You but. Know, it is, you know, it's what it's all about. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway. And now, oh, he's been waiting for this. It's time for Jim to get his nerd on. <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs> When the kids, when the kids say yay, um, well, for most people, a power outage, uh, is a disaster or it's a, it's one of those things where you groan. Well, I've spent the last four years. Some of you have heard this before. I spent the last three or four years kind of preparing, uh, here in Nebraska, you know, we get severe weather from time to time or winter storm or a tornado of sort, or I think sometimes just the power goes out. And so th- uh, Thursday, Wednesday, uh, I think it was Wednesday. Um, we lost power. I just, it was gone and the power goes down. Now I've, I have a 5,000 uh, watt generator that I purchased back at the beginning of the uh, pandemic. I've kind of wired the house to be able to, like, it's a portable generator. It's not one of those whole house things, but I've wired up the house. So a single plug can come in and then I can run things inside the house. And, uh, I'm kind of geeked out about it, Dave. It's like now when we lose power. So my first thought is like, yes, I get I to pull the generator out. Right. It's, I know that's weird. I know that's weird. No, but it's not. It's like the guy with the snowblower. They're like, yes, a blizzard. <laughs> the phone books are here. The phone books are here. <laughs> so, so anyway, so the power goes down and you have to, you have to have this conversation of, uh, so, you know, lights go off and I look at Sarah and I'm like, well, do I, do I, pull the generator out. I mean, cause you don't know if it's going to come back on right away. Oftentimes it comes back on. Sometimes it didn't. I waited a good five minutes. Okay. It's not coming back on. I checked the app. We have a power app that I checked the app and like, yeah, big outage area. Okay. Time to start bringing some things out. So got the generator out, plugged it into the house, started running the cords that I need to the various places. And I've got it all kind of set up. But one of the things, one of the areas that I'm not very efficient in is my, my desk area down here. I have four, five, six computers down here and um, uh, they all run into UPSs. So I have two uninterruptible power sources, power sources uh, that that battery backups is basically what they are. And they all run into two. So everything goes into two UPSs. They're not very good UPSs. They're the cheaper, you know, they're a hundred dollars or $200. Once you get it staples or, or, you know, yeah, yeah, a little bigger than what Dave is showing on screen, but Nonetheless, uh, I think they, they can handle as many, I think they're eight or 900 watts a, a piece. And I have about 800 watts between all of this computer and all my monitors and all those other kinds of things. So having them divided among two. But I can't just unplug the UPSs and plug them into the generator because they're not very good. You need a pure sine wave and some other things to a little more, uh, a little more expensive uh, equipment to get that done. And what I really want is just one plug uh, to uh, to... We lose power, unplug it, plug it into the generator. We're off and running. And I want it to last longer. These UPSs aren't very good. So they last maybe seven minutes, five minutes. Yeah, you you have to run to your bedroom and start shutting stuff down because it's not going to last very long. uh, Yeah, yeah. And and, and you get what you pay for. Uh, Just as a side note, this whole power outage killed one of the UPSs that I have. So I'm going to buy another one anyways. Like. I powered everything back up and I immediately got a warning message and I, I went out and checked it. And sure enough, it's, it, it kind of works, but it doesn't, it's warning me like, yeah. dude, you better, you better replace me. I've had these four or five years. So I've gotten my money's worth out of them. I did a whole bunch of looking into what would it take to buy a UPS that would work on my generator as well as, um, uh, handle everything. I kind of wanted to get down to one device. And I, there are trip light makes some UPS devices that can handle that much, like a, a like a 1500 Watts wow. that would work for me. Right. Again, but those batteries are their lead acid batteries. They're not as good as some of the technologies we have out there now. And so I started looking at, maybe some of you have been doing this as well. I started looking at uh, this idea of these solar generators and, and lately they have gotten, Hmm. Pretty interesting uh, in in the technologies that they have. The batteries, the newest batteries that I have, um, uh, will handle up to 3,000 cycles. In other words, drain it down, bring it up, drain it down, bring it up. Hmm. 3,000 cycles before it reaches 80%. So it's not even dead. That's just down to 80% uh, effectiveness. Um, this one you're looking at on screen now is from a company called Ugreen. They... If you think of companies like a company like Anchor, a lot of folks know Anchor. Um, 
they uh they these guys came out it's a chinese company but they came out of the cell phone charging market hmm. and are now making these portable power stations uh there's a bunch jackery is in this market there's a bunch of these kind of coming these portable power stations but one of the cool things that's coming in the last couple of years is you can also use them as a ups and as we're as we're looking at the the one i just purchased the 1200 model here has a light on it, which is kind of perfect. If the power goes off, it's dark. Usually you can push a button, light comes on, it'll light up the area. It'll handle up, this one will handle up to 1,200 watts, um, which is probably two, uh, or it'll support two-thirds of what I need, which is great. So instead of when we have a power outage now, instead of me having to run to the computers to shut them down, this will last for what I'm going to plug into it uh, between a half an hour and an hour. So it gives me a lot of time to set it up. It will handle and charge off the generator, which is super awesome. Um, and it, it just gives me some, and then I can also charge other things off of it. In theory, if I was in a real disaster and the generator didn't work, I could unplug my, because well, what's important is food, not computers. <laughs> I can unplug it from all my computers, take it to the fridges, and it would power those for a certain period of time. In addition, I can also run solar off of these. So if I got into a situation, I may purchase, I didn't purchase the solar panels, but I may purchase the solar panels down the line so that I have emergency power just in case I ran into a situation where I needed it. Uh, Dave put the link in the chat room. I have no affiliation there. There are links to get, uh, the the one I bought is $1,000, 999 You can get $200 off pretty easily right now to bring it down. If you go to Ugreen, um, you, at least in the United States, I didn't, I got free shipping and didn't have to pay sales tax. And I'm excited about Dave. This will come here in the next couple of weeks and we'll replace both UPS devices, bring it down to one and really give me an opportunity. I got to test it out. Um, there, it's a brand new product, but, but they're doing some really cool things. And so this was kind of an exciting, um, um, uh, addition to the but now you would say eight hundred dollars for just to back up your stuff, Jim. I don't recommend this for everybody. This is one of those things. I have a bunch of stuff down here. I'm a small business. Mar B was on my program, and I'm basically a small business, uh, all all on my own. So, go ahead. Let me help you make some money. Uh, go up and click on the top logo at, at U Green. The top logo? Yeah, like or go to the home screen. Yeah, okay. So click on Ugreen in the upper left-hand corner. Mm -hmm. So I'll take you back to the front page. Scroll to the bottom. And middle column, you should see the phrase affiliate program. Oh, nice. There we go. So All right. So that, but that's, I I say that because this is a great example of like, Jim found a product. He likes it. Well, Well, we'll assume he likes it when it gets there. Um, it's a great product that might fit his audience. Oh, by the way, I always scroll to the bottom and look for either partners or affiliate program because, you know, some people make it a little harder to get into their affiliate program. Uh, some people don't. And, you know, I forget, you know, it probably has information there on what kind of percent, any kind of percentage is better than a poke in the eye. And yeah. so... Yeah. Uh, that might be something yeah. to uh, to look into. I know I was amazed because they've got a ton of, uh, you know, I was in a shopping for a dock for my Mac Mini. They have docks. They have all sorts of stuff over there. They have a, a thing. If you have wired headphones and you have a, you know, the old, uh, you're like, wait, where's where's the plug? They have a little plug that you can plug into your phone and then plug your wired headphones into. Uh, so very cool, man. Yeah. I can't recommend this thing yet. It's, I don't have right. it. I don't own it. I, it, I, it's, I, I need to, you know, I just bought it yesterday. I need to bring it in. I try it out in my scenario. Yeah. First thing I'll do is hook it up to the generator and make sure it doesn't pop the, yeah. doesn't pop the circuit, right? That before I get very far, that's the number one thing I bought it for was to be able to charge it off my generator. Right. And then have it around in, in, in my case, it's going to be a pass through, right? In most cases, yeah. the power's still going to come off of the grid. It's going to pass it through, but it has a 20 millisecond cutover. And I watched a couple of YouTube videos where guys tested this out mm. 20 millisecond cutover. If it senses it loses power, it just cuts over the, in all the videos I saw, I had a quiet fan and, and some of those other things, nice. those have been other complaints, but yeah, no, kind of a fun Dave. It's one of those things where, like your backup, like your data backup, you got to kind of think about, you know, my computer's protected from a surge. I have a whole house surge protector. 
can, could I operate or do I need to operate if the power goes down? You may not need to, but it's still nice to have a UPS for brownouts. Like, you know, when you just, the power drops for just a second yeah. and then comes back, nothing more frustrating than, now, if you're on a laptop, you already have a built-in battery. Have you tested that battery in a while, by the way? Do you know how long it'll last? Yeah, I, well, I know right. the one that I just held up, the reason it, it quit working is because the battery was dead. And I was like, I'm just going to go buy a new one and then I'll buy a battery, have that there, and I'll have it as a backup uh, Dan says, we all know where we're going when the zombie apocalypse hits. Um, yeah, yeah, you want to be at my house. I'll have a, power. Yeah, and, no guns. No guns, right. but I'll have power. <laughs> we're all Maybe go- I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> we're all going to Lincoln, Nebraska, bring cans and ammo. There we go. Uh, Craig is bringing the peanuts. So it's uh, we're all set to go now. All right. Well, here's an, a question I've, I've seen a bit popping up in uh, different groups. Uh, and this is – it's kind of about the Apple charts, but um, – Apple Analytics and Charts is, hello, can someone point me to a post or information about Apple Podcasts and Apple Analytics? Podbean says we've done our best download numbers, uh, published Thursday, 3 a.m. UK time. And yet Apple Podcast Analytics is showing a small fraction of what Podbean says. I've checked with Podbean, and they said the issue is not on their side, and Apple support responded, I have to wait 72 hours for the data to come through. So I'm confused. How do the Apple Podcast charts work? We're going to come back to that one. Uh, as up till now, the last 10 weeks, uh, the last 10 weekly episodes, we've always moved up the chart slightly once we release an episode and not, my mouse has gone really weird and not actually downward. So there's something here that, because um, I had somebody else ask me about this, like, hey, uh, they were on Captivate. They're like, the numbers don't match Apple. And because when you look at your media host, so if it's Libsyn, Buzzsprout, Captivate, Podbean, whoever, they're looking at all the downloads from every single app, Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Theracast, everywhere a cast cast, right? They're looking at all the numbers. So that number is always going to be bigger because when you look at Apple Podcasts, you're only looking at the plays or the downloads from Apple. So all the 70% of Europe that's using an Android not going to be in the Apple podcast things. Likewise, if you go to like, when I look at Google, uh, if you go to podcastsmanager.google.com, you can see how many people are listening on Google podcast, which means there's not going to be much there. So I see people get that confused. They think, oh, when I look, this is Apple's versions of my stats. And it's like, no, it's Apple's version of your stats of your audience that listens on Apple. So go with your media host, whatever it is, that's the one you want to go by. And then what I use Apple Podcasts for is I love the fact that they can show you how far people listen and when they tuned out. You can also get that in Spotify, podcaster, podcasters.spotify.com. And you used to be able to kind of get it in Google uh, where you could actually see where how far people listen. And that is a stat that uh, you you may not like be careful what you wish for. Because you go in, you're like, wait, people tuned out 40% of the way through the show? Yes, yes, they did. So, uh, yeah, so it's Apple is podcastconnect.apple.com. He said, trying to type it in accurately. Google is podcasts, and I believe, because they all make them plural, podcastmanager.google.com. And then I think Spotify is podcasters.spotify.com. So those are three. And Spotify will also show you uh, your audience's favorite artist, which showed me that I have a very wide range because it was The Weeknd and Blake, what's his name from The Voice? Shelton. Blake Shelton, yeah. And I was like, that's two people. So so uh, that's a, a question I've been seeing more. This is an interesting one. And this is another one. I've seen two people ask this this week. I'm looking for a platform to host a ticketed live stream with multiple rep- remote participants. I hope this is the right place to... Oh, he's in a group. Uh, I host a podcast related to a niche topic in my career. It's been going well, getting great feedback from other professionals and pretty consistently growing with downloads. I've been wanting to do a panel style episode for some time now and plan to do one in a few months. I currently record with remote guests on Zencaster. So here's that whole discussion again. But I've been tossing around the idea of making it a live panel that includes Q&A. I would also like to be able to pay the speakers that I have, even if it's a modest amount, to show my appreciation 
So I've considered making it a ticketed event as well. So any ideas, Jim? Well, I, I think hop in who owns Streamyard would yeah. be uh, there in this space. Uh, webinar.net is also in this space. I mean, you could do this on things like zoom or, 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 um, stream yard, or you could do it that way. Anything that broadcasts, but some of those platforms, by the way, I haven't used either one of those for these kinds of things. Right. So I just know they do them. They have an integrated piece that allows in some cases, depending who you use, where they take payments and they, you know, they help you through the whole, you can advertise for it. You can collect, you know, you could do it piecemeal. You could use like Eventbrite. That's what we, we use from time. Eventbrite to go in and collect. They're really good at that piece. And then use another platform to have them come for the event might be another way um, to get that done. That was going to be my suggestion. Use Eventbrite. And there's got to be an alternative. I'm sure, you know, I'll just go to AppSumo and <laughs> type in yeah. tickets. But uh, mm -hmm. have Eventbrite and then... When you set up StreamYard, don't stream it anywhere. I'm not sure. I'm yeah. sure there's still yeah. got to be the link to, you know, the stream. And then just email that via Eventbrite because Eventbrite's got a pretty decent uh, delivery. Yeah, I think you rate. can come right to StreamYard now for the stream. You don't have to go to YouTube. Or you don't have to go yeah. to LinkedIn. I think they've they've got the ability to do it right there. My other point might be, for the first one at least, I mean, Jim mentioned this earlier, you know, when you can keep it simple. So maybe try just doing a webinar with people that want to participate for free and go that route. And then, cause it's a different beast live, especially is a different beast. Mm -hmm. And then if that goes good, then like, okay, let's, let's throw in ticketing now for the next one, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, the, the worst part about all of that is the support. <laughs> so, you know, you're like, you get, say you get, a hundred people, maybe 200 even you, then I can't connect how, what you people, they, they get in a panic. I never got an email. I don't know where to go. What, and you're focusing on trying to have great content and your guests, and you're not able to do support at the same time. So if you're going to do an event like that, make sure you've contracted somebody or you've got a friend yeah. or something who's helping people get connected. Cause I guarantee you there will be people who for whatever reason, can't figure it out. And you're like, guys, this is so simple. Yeah, it's like the link <laughs> literally one click or it's on YouTube. I don't know how to get there. I can't even tie my shoes. You know, And you're like, well, uh, okay. So just, you know, it, having somebody help you in that is probably worth your time because you can't do both. You cannot be starting this thing, still supporting people trying to connect. Right. And they will, they will rattle your cage trying to find you trying to, cause they paid for it. Right. They, they want to be there. Right. And can I, can I give another hint of advice? Start on, this drives me nuts. Like I went to a web, all webinars start five minutes late. They're like, it starts at noon. They all start at 1205. And I'm like, well, I actually, I have this thing. I've been doing it since, I don't know. I was probably in kindergarten that when I need to be someplace on time, um, I, I figure out how much time is it going to take me to get there? And and then I leave at that time. So I show up on time and I'm yeah. not like a time, like, I'm not going to go crazy on that, but I just, I hate the fact that it's like, and then my biggest pet peeve, I'm like, okay, I get it. You're going to let people have life and, you know, we're going to show up five minutes and spend five minutes going, oh my gosh, Tennessee, Tennessee in the house, everybody. Woo. Please edit that out of the replay. That drives right. me nuts when I like I click play and I get to watch the thirty second countdown. I'm like, really, really? So said the guy who didn't edit out the three starts of last week's episode, oh. <laughs> but I will eventually. I'll, I'll get to that. Um, well, the, Davey, also, you know, um, I always I always tell my guests we start thirty minutes early for everything. Now, yeah. not to not not broadcasting, but. I want everybody who's going to be on the program there in early 30 minutes. Home Gadget Geeks is 15, but, but I know those are podcasters, so I know we're going to be okay. So for the general, for general guests, half an hour. And I tell them all the time, you know, we sit around for about 15 or 20 minutes just chatting and yeah. talking. And, you know, I, I heard, and, and what I said is I always tell them, if I start 15 minutes early, I have 25 minutes worth of problems. But when I start 30 <laughs> minutes early, I have zero minutes worth of problems. Yeah. And I'd much rather have the zero minutes and everybody's relaxed and maybe even a little bored 
they, it calms them down. They get in, you know, they kind of get into a rhythm. We get to talk about some, just some casual things. Don't do the show. Like don't right. practice the show in those 30 minutes. <laughs> like don't, resist that urge. Some, some guests want to then just vomit everything they know on you during that time. And you're like, no, 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 save it for the show. But it's a weird principle. 15 minutes early causes 25, bless you, 25 minutes worth of problems. But starting 30 minutes early is always zero. And then if you do have problems, you've got plenty of time to fix it. Yeah. Just, I've done thousands of these. It's worked every single time. So. Yeah. We, uh, when I do webinars for Libsyn, we always meet the day before. And I forget what the problem was, but there was something in the last one where we use Crowdcast and something with my computers and the, camera something and they're like well that's why we do this the day before you know so uh, and uncle marv says with Streamyard, you can actually embed it on your website which is true i don't think they have the chat embeddable yet i know i saw a video where they explained this though they it might Wish they had their own chat that'd be awesome that would be great yeah but uh yeah so i i i'm a big Streamyard fan i know uh there are other tools out there and things like that but this is a case where if you take care of your customer, like when I start Saturday, I don't go, I'm not thinking, oh, I hope StreamYard works today. It, it works, you know, so. Um, in fact, I'm super surprised when it doesn't. We, we yeah, had yeah. an issue a couple Thursdays ago and there were some weird things going on and we couldn't explain it. The only thing I could explain was it was StreamYard, uh, some, something going on with their AWS instance or instances. And it was super surprising. Like I was like, oh, well, I haven't had that in a long time. So yeah, it's, it's worked out pretty well. The, uh, we'll wrap up with this one. Uh, I haven't had this one in a while. I'm struggling to find benchmarks. I'm, I'm struggling to get an idea of what's normal or bad in our stats. Example, our Spotify listener to follower ratio is about 35%. I feel like that's good. Is it? The idea that one third of the people who listen to us say, hey, I'd like to hear more of this. That sounds great. Um, the third quartile listener retention can be between 55% and 80%. Again, good or bad. 55% feels bad, but that's occasional, not so great episodes. And it's also lower since we added ads. Mm, that's a novel idea. Uh, we have, we're just shy of 2,500 followers on Spotify, I guess 5,000 overall then, and just shy of 500 listens or so per episode, uh, which is interesting. So they have, wait a minute, 2,000 followers, but they're only getting 500 listens per episode. Interesting. Uh, what are normal stats? Welcome a discussion. Also any tips for growing, of course. Um, so I put in here the, the Buzzsprout, at the bottom of Buzzsprout, they now have, I think it's system stats or something like that. The median is 32 downloads an episode. Uh, Libsyn always puts theirs out once a month. It's around 150. That's 50% get more and 50% get less uh, of that. The average for Libsyn is somewhere around 1,500, maybe 1,400, something like that. Uh, if you are getting 440 downloads per episode on Buzzsprout, you're in the top 10. So this is just one of those where um, I was talking, we talked about this before we start recording. Mark Asquith, after having a, a baby, is back to podcasting. Well, actually, he didn't have a baby, but anyway, you get the point. And um, he had a great analogy. He said, and it really is true, podcasting is a little bit like golf because really you're just competing against yourself. You can look at other podcasts, but in the end, you're only as good as your best show. And he said, so many people have a friend go, hey, have you ever played golf? And he's like, no, I've never played. And he's like, oh, I, we, we got an old spare set. It's around here. It's a clunker set, but it'll it'll get you going. You, we can go play golf. And he guy says, so the guy goes out and plays golf. And then the next day wakes up and goes, okay, great. How can I make money at this? <laughs> I was like, yes, that is podcasting. So um I always just say it, it depends. You know, if I went out and ran a mile right now, I'm going to say somewhere around, I don't know, eight, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And if I came back and said, Hey, I just ran a mile in 13 minutes. Is that good? Um, somebody, and I go, I'm, I'm in my fifties. I'm about 40 pounds overweight. I've never ran in my life. Somebody might go, Hey, that's not bad. 
But if uh, an Olympic athlete comes in and says, hey, I just ran a 14-minute mile, they'd be like, yeah, and you're fired. So it really, I don't know that there is a, it, it really comes back to why. Why are you doing the show? And are you getting? Totally. Yeah. yeah. I loved your analogy about it. You're competing against yourself. Like in the, that, there's no depends in that because it's just you. So what do you want? What do you want? What are you trying to do? Um, you know, our, the, the called the coach podcast that we do at Gallup, there are literally no other competitors to that. Like I, it's unique. It's from Gallup. I don't know of many other podcasts that are doing what we're doing. And I don't care if there's competitors. I don't, I track numbers and yeah, numbers have been up this year, which is weird. I don't know why. Like I'm looking, I've, we've produced less episodes. We've been less consistent and yet the numbers are up 50%. And you're like, what, what's going on here with this? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, for me, you know, it's a communications and marketing tool for us. And that's all that matters is that we are getting some people listening to it. I do track the numbers, but I track them in relation to what did I do last year? What am I trying to do? What are the things that are happening here? So I think, um, yeah, and, and Uncle Mar says less is more. This is, I, <laughs> this year, um, it's starting in January, we really backed off our number and our consistency of it. And we're getting more downloads this year than we got all of last year with less episodes. And I, Dave, it doesn't make any sense. I've been distracted with this conversion. I haven't been out in social as much. But one of my teammates said, uh, you know, maybe you ought to pay less attention to the project you're working on. It'll do better. <laughs> I was like, Gee, yikes. But it, it is one of those things that you you just, for you, what are you, what are you trying to get done? And then you march towards those metrics. Yeah. Uh, Brad says, this should be consistent across shows. What's a good consumption rate on YouTube? 50% is like, you are a demigod. You know, it's like, uh, and I go back to Jack Reicher. He, when he was creating his show, the dark Knight diaries, he asked people on a scale from one to 10, how likely are you to tell a friend about the episode you just heard? And if he got a seven, he'd be like, yeah, it's not good enough. He was looking for like nines and tens and being a, you know, a guy that came out of education, I like nines and tens. So when I see a 56, I'm like, well, that'd be great if I was a YouTuber. Oh, that's right. I'm not a YouTuber. Uh, so, you know, that's one of those, some people might be happy with 50. Some people might not be happy until they get to, you know, you got to realize that the minute you say, Hey, thanks so much for tuning in and you do your little wrap up, they're gone. They're already gone. So I don't know, Jim, any thoughts on consumption rate? Yeah, none. Yeah, None. It, like you said, I, I would be careful when you start because you say you do an hour show and you you're like, oh my gosh, they're dropping after fifteen or twenty minutes. Yeah. I'm just going to short my show to fifteen or twenty minutes. There are people who will listen to the full hour. They still are there. In fact, they want you to be there. Yeah. And if you all of a sudden just start doing fifteen minute shows, they're going to be like, well, I, I listened to this show because it was an hour. Then they start dropping. Is that really what you want? Let them choose how long they listen for. Stop trying to figure. You create content that you think is helpful. Do with the stats what you see true or what you see is best for you. But there are if there are people going all the way to the end, they'll appreciate it if you keep going. You know what you can't do? Make a 20-minute podcast an hour. <laughs> Once it's 20 minutes, it's like cutting a board. You can't make it any longer, right? So if you're, you know, you, you got to kind of think through those things, but if you've been going a while in an hour and you just all of a sudden shorten it up to 20 minutes, you're going to have disappointed people. Yeah. He says, I'm not mm -hmm. talking about the beginning. Yeah. Everybody skips your intro. That's actually a good thing. Everybody. Yeah. The, so that's usually your, your loyal listeners, but you know, pick a, pick a benchmark, go for it. You know, yeah. Like Jim says, don't, you, you can mess up your show sometimes uh, trying to get the perfect thing. And you're like, okay, great. I got a hundred percent listens, but I've only got four listeners now. So that's, you know, always deliver value. Right. If, if it's right. valuable, right. they'll listen, you know, or as our good friend Glenn likes to say, um, don't be boring. Yeah. And then, uh, we'll wrap up with this one. Uh, cause it's Randy Cantrell. Uh, would you record StreamYard over zoom just for recording a show? My answer is I don't know because I've, I would need to compare Zoom audio to Squadcast audio to see which one was better. For for multiple co-hosts, 
That's a good question. Or does it matter? I guess is the other option out there. I've never compared the two. I I think squad here's the thing, everybody knows how to use Zoom. I think it's easier to get into Squadcast. I think you click and then you're in and then I just have to pull you into the the video. I don't know. Jim? I think people treat Zoom more like a phone call rather than a podcast. Mm. And so that's why I think, because everybody says like Zoom audio is so bad. It's not bad for me, (laughs) but I use a microphone, right? That's good. So when I'm recording myself on Zoom, doesn't sound bad. I think think it gets maligned. Is that the right word? It gets maligned because... People, oh, it's Zoom. I'll just, I'll just use whatever, right? Yeah. Instead of, oh, I'm going on Streamyard. I better, okay, I better bring out some equipment. So, eh, you know, I think it'd be okay with good equipment. It's a novel idea. Yeah, yeah. Imagine that. Well, Imagine episode four thirty six is in the can. Anything we mentioned today, you can find it at thepodcastcoach.com slash four three six. Jim, what is coming up on theaverageguy.tv? Marv B joins me. We talk about, we have some a big conversation about AI and it, not what you think. It's not a technical conversation. It's a little bit about using it. And so the audience immediately was like, oh man, this was an interesting conversation. So don't take my word for it. Our audience loved it. The live audience as well. And then we spent some time on this UPS conversation that led to what we talked about during the show of me purchasing this, this solar generator. So available now posted, uh, homegadgetgeeks.com. And on the School of Podcasting, I interview Katie Kremitzos, who just went over a hundred million downloads. That's crazy. So we talk about she has the uh, the women. I always get this wrong. Women's Meditation Network. And uh, at one point, she had two podcasts and two children under the age of two. Uh, one was a baby, and one was like one and a half years old, and she was doing two podcasts. And I go, how how do you do that? That seems impossible. So that is coming up on the School of Podcasts. Some really interesting insights on that. That I was like, I, I was kind of bummed. I mean, I understand, but she had she's like going on TV and stuff now. It's great. But um, I wanted to get dive a little more into uh, some of the stuff in terms of like, like, okay, the good news is you have 100 million downloads. What's the downside of that? And uh, because there are, you know, it's like you said earlier, if you have a super popular show, it might be so overwhelming, it it strips the fun out of it. So, uh, you know, that's coming up on the school of podcasting.com. Thanks to all the people in the chat room, Mark at podcastbranding.co and Dan at based on a true story podcast.com. We'll see you later.